So before we turn to our law enforcement folks at the table, uh, what we'd like to do is turn uh, to Tim Ballard, who is the founder and CEO of Operation uh, Underground, uh, and also to Alma Fecker. Uh, thanks to both of them for being here, the founder and president of the International uh, Network of Parks. Uh, they'll be talking to us about their experience assi assisting victims, sir. So I'd like to start with, perhaps with Tim and then with Alma. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Thank, Thank you very much. I spent 12 years as a special agent, as an undercover operator, working on the southern border, working sex trafficking cases. Um, and I can tell you, you're exactly right. Uh, one little girl I can tell you about, in fact, I introduced this little girl to Ms. To Ms. Trump uh, during a private briefing. This little girl was kidnapped in Central America, 11 years old, groomed for two years, with the intent of getting her ready to come to America. Why? Because we are the highest consuming nation of child pornography. We are the clientele that's the big money. They brought this little girl through a, a part of the, of the southern border where there was no wall, easily got her to New York City, and this is hard to hear, but this is the truth, and everyone needs to hear this. This little girl, and this is a very typical, raped for money every day, 30 to 40 times a day. If that's not a crisis, if that's not an emergency, I don't know what is. Now let me say this, had there been a wall, had there been a barrier, this little girl likely would have been saved because the traffickers would have been forced to take this child through the port of entry where we have amazing law enforcement. I've worked with these people. These are the best people on the planet. They can detect, they have equipment, they have trained agents. In contrast, while this was happening, I was working another case. A little boy, a Mexican boy who was kidnapped by an American trafficker by a child pornographer. He kidnapped Mexican children, brought them to San Bernardino County, where he had a, a makeshift studio, made child porn with these little children, five years old. This little boy was kidnapped in Mexicali, Mexico, where there was a wall, where there is a barrier, and so he was forced to take this little boy through the Calexico port of entry, and guess what? It worked. We captured him. We rescued the little boy and subsequently rescued 12 other children in San Bernardino, California. The difference between those two cases is two plus two equals four. The wall was the difference. The wall rescued this little boy and the lack of a wall caused this little girl to go through a hell that is indescribable, that is not manufactured. It is a real crisis. It is a real emergency. And you have many thousands of people like this. Thousands. This is, this is happening all the time. We, we work in Mexico. We, we have done several operations. I've just met with the, with the Secretary of State, their equivalent, uh, Olga Sanchez, just last month about this. Um, we are having to do operations in Mexico, our foundation, working with law enforcement, to be, essentially become the wall, because there is no wall. We're, we're forward deployed. It's like catching, trying to catch flies with chopsticks. Uh, it works. We can we, we can we can make it work. But if we had a big, you know, fly swatter, which is the wall, that'd be a lot better. Yeah. It stops it. The world is being hit by the storm of the new movie Sound of Freedom, which has been released nationally and internationally in theaters all over America and the world. And this movie is not only hitting people by storm because it's showing the the raw reality of human trafficking, but it's really showing people how prevalent and how widespread human trafficking and modern day slavery has been because most people just do not understand the statistics behind the, the human trafficking of children um, and uh, girls that are being basically used in pornography videos and being used for um, being pimped out for different various means and for either make money or sexual acts or filming uh, really terrible movies and videos that are then put on porn sites that uh, most of America consumes. So people don't realize that with the Sound of Freedom movie, the big underbelly of of uh, pedophilia, the underbelly of human trafficking, sex trafficking, all the worst things in the world that can be happening to a human being are being are happening basically right in front of our eyes. It's just we don't see it in the Western world because everything is cauterized and made look like everything is all right. Because un unless you look at the underbelly of society, unless you look at how the elites in the world operate and how they um, have sex islands where they go and, and um, consume children for their own pleasure because everything else has been already consumed by them, we don't really understand 
the true depth of the evil and depravity that's happening. And with the Sound of Freedom movie, it really reveals that, you know, somebody had a mission and a call. They felt a mission to leave their federal government agency, which um, they believe they were doing the right thing by stopping drug traffickers. But they realized that leaving the, the federal job was the only way for um, the guy in the movie, Tim Ballard, played by Jim Caviezel. It was the only way for him to actually be successful in rescuing children because governments, you know, have sovereign sovereign rules about, you know, who can operate in the country. And so if the, the, the government that's in question, whether it's Colombia, Honduras or Mexico or Chile, or, or Russia, or Ukraine, America, whatever the government it is, if the authorities are not doing anything or they're in on it, as the movie basically shows and reveals that a lot of the, um, the elites are behind a lot of this trafficking of children. And in real life, we know that true with Jeffrey Epstein, his island. Uh, but unless, you know, you're able to go cross nationally, internationally to stop children being trafficked, you can't really do much and you have to rely on the local government that's there set up, which is supposed to protect the most innocent of us. But the problem is that the most innocent of us are not being protected. The most innocent of us are being used and abused and murdered. Because it's not only sex trafficking that's the biggest a crime that's happening around the world. One of the two biggest crimes would be murder and, and sexual abuse. And human trafficking involves both of those. But the biggest uh, uh, crime that's happening in our own shores right now in America is abortion. Because we're not valuing human life the way we're supposed to. And that is another another aspect of the whole uh, not valuing human life, which is seen in the Sound of Freedom movie, but it revolves around human trafficking specifically. So the the movie um, Sound of Freedom, I, I, if you haven't seen the trailer, I want to show you the trailer for it. It's uh, being it was uh, basically produced by an independent company, and it was trying to be distributed through F Fox and Disney, but. Um, there's reports going around that Disney and Fox did not want to distribute it because once Disney bought Fox, uh, they shelved the project. Now, I don't know whether it's completely verifiable, but it seems like the evidence is leaning that way. But it, it, but it doesn't surprise me that Disney uh, would shelve this project, the Fox would shelve it. And then another company, the Mormon-based company, Angel Studios, which created The Chosen, is the one that actually... Um, is you know just distributed and partially funded and so and even though i i this is my personal opinion but i do not agree with angel studios because you know they're they're a um, mormon based company they they're funding the chosen which is absolutely a her her heretical jesus christ being shown on screen and if um just really quick for anybody who hasn't seen the truth about the chosen i would direct you to my best um, friend's documentary called the chosen exposing on youtube and i'll um, put the put the little image up above right here so you could see what it looks at like, the trailer and uh, and you can or the thumbnail and you can go and, and see actually what the chosen is really about how it doesn't represent the true Jesus and how Mormonism is not true Christianity but okay besides that you know Angel Studios um, basically was the one who picked to fund uh, and distribute the movie um, and so but disney and fox shelved it and and basically now that the movie has been released it was basically two years ago when the movie was actually already finished it started in 2018 was it was really put in post-production in 2020 they released one of the first trailers and i want to actually show you that trailer right now because it'll help you understand more of the background behind tim ballard played by jim caviezel um showing the the heroic activities that he did after he quit the government job at the department of homeland security and then became an investigative independent agent uh in the south american country in order to rescue uh, a little girl um and 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 uh you know other uh, hundreds of other survivors so go ahead and, and watch this I don't think I can do this job, Tim. As soon as I lay down, 
All these see are those kids' faces. How long you been doing this? Twelve years. How do you do it? It is the fastest growing international crime network that the world has ever seen. It has already passed the illegal arms trade, and soon it's going to pass the drug trade. Senor Tomateo, tu rescatamiento es verdad. Quizá puedas ayudarme a encontrar a mi hermana. Imagine walking into a room right now, seeing an empty bed. What will we do? We're Homeland Security. You know we can't go off rescuing kids in Colombia. This job tears you to pieces. This is my one chance to put those pieces back together. We're talking about extracting a million-year-old girl from an army of rebels. Not just her. I'm talking about rescuing hundreds of kids. She could be a block down the road, or she could be in Moscow, Bangkok, L.A. Over two million children a year are being sucked into the deepest recesses of hell. If we do nothing, someday it's going to reach the likes of you. What if this was your daughter? So it's intense, right? Uh, this, uh, the movie is intense. Uh, if you have, if you ha have seen the trailer right now, you can definitely understand um, how how uh, how tough it is to be in that kind of job. I mean, I couldn't imagine being in in uh, you know officer working for the federal government and seeing all this happening, but then you couldn't do anything about it. I, I you know, I'd want my heart would want to go out out of conviction, out of what God you know would put on my heart to rescue the innocent, because that's what's God heart God's heart is is to rescue the innocent. I would want to quit and do you know independent uh, investigation and capture of the pedophiles and the sex traffickers. And the thing is, is that's what Tim Ballard did. And you know, if you probably seen interviews on uh, different shows that he's been on, he's been showing how sex trafficking, human trafficking, is the biggest slavery in the, in the modern era. Um, it's actually bigger than slavery of African Americans back in the United States uh, 150 years ago. And it's amazing how the, the media and all the leftist Marxist organizations all complain about, uh, you know, slavery and reparations. Yet yeah, it's something that happened 150 years ago, but but they don't even care about what's going on current day because a lot of these leftist liberals, they hate the movie. They hate Jim Caviezel. They hate any faith, faith, faith based and Christian based things, you know, but especially human trafficking stuff, film because it, it shows them that they're bankrupt and they're embarrassing themselves. Um, a lot of them are calling this movie QAnon Conspiracy. And for those who don't know the QAnon Conspiracy, you know, started in 2017 on, on the 4chan message board, which talked about uh, that, you know, there was um, a secret team led by Trump that was going to save America from Obama and Hillary. They had children uh, basically, you know, being trafficked and uh, they were doing child sacrifices and satanic sacrifices using adrenochrome. Uh, which they extract from children. And actually the movie or Jim Caviezel talks about it and it's actually a real thing. It's not a conspiracy. But what, what they did is that they conflate all the false claims of QAnon and they basically label it, put it on the movie and then try to show it as saying that, you know, this movie is made for uh, idiots, you know, and, and, and dads who want to be heroic. And it's absolutely disgusting how the media is so pro <laughs> pedophilia in a way i mean they're almost pro human trafficking and if we challenge them they wouldn't admit no there's no way individuals but as organization it's like they're they're full of a virus where the virus tells them you have to be against everything that you know christians and um you, you know uh faith-based people release you have to be against uh, any movie that's uh, well human trafficking and pedophilia because it means that it's connected to the QAnon Trump stuff and 
it, it, they're all Trump people that are watching all the conservatives because they can see the metrics. They know it's the uh, mostly conservatives that are Christians that are watching it. If you've seen it, leave a comment below about what you thought was the most powerful scene in the movie. But so you have <clears throat> you have all of these um, disgusting media uh, acolytes who are uh, who are basically. Uh, saying that this movie is part of a conspiracy and you know that it's it's not really as big as it seems that the slavery and the human trafficking but if they did any research cursor research they would see that the justice department of the united states says the uh, human trafficking is the modern day slavery that there's more uh you know trafficked people as slaves than there was ever in human history and it is and it's 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 out you know it's open in some countries third world countries but it's also hidden and it's an open secret and a lot of governments cover that up and so you have so much uh, so much defamation happening against what the sound of freedom is trying to expose the agenda behind um they say the satanic destruction of uh, this world is, is human trafficking you know satan works in different ways he doesn't just operate um you know just murdering everybody you know but he also you know uses people as slaves and we're all slaves to sin and but in satan's world he operates in a in a physical way too where he uses human children as a way to to destroy them and if he can't get them through abortion in the beginning stages of life well he'll get them throughout uh their childhood and that's why the media is so against the uh, the movie and any kind of human trafficking awareness they say that they are but in reality when there's um people and and uh you know christians or conservatives talking about it they think like oh it's a right-wing conspiracy because they don't actually see that it goes beyond politics they think it, it's only because they're trump supporters and that's the only reason why they're supporting sound of freedom but that's not true at all because it doesn't matter whether you're in the left or the right, whether you're a Hillary Clinton supporter or, by, well, maybe, may, hold on, maybe I'm wrong about that. But, you know, the thing is, is though it, it shouldn't matter whether you're left, you're on the left or the right, you should love children because we're human beings. We should love one another. The Bible says uh, we're our brother's keeper. We're our sister's keeper. You know, we're one another's um, keeper, you know, because none of us is an island in this world. We're all being supported by one another. We're all uh, standing on the giants on the shoulders of giants and so they don't realize that you know this whole sex trafficking and pedophilia agenda is is goes beyond any kind of political it's human rights and it goes to the heart of god you know god is the one who created life and he wants everyone um every children every child to enjoy a good life growing up but because this world is broken by sin and the devil and the devil truly hates us he wants to kill everybody on earth if he could but again god overrides the devil's plan but again at the same time you know the devil has some free reign because people have free will to do what he wants and they love him because they're his children even though if they don't believe in him but the point my point is that human trafficking is a huge thing and it goes beyond borders uh it's it's international i'm from the country of ukraine and ukraine is known as the as the biggest trafficking hub in the world and and that's something that really saddens me you know as a ukrainian american who lives in america but the thing is as though you know not only is ukraine in war right now but you know human trafficking becomes even worse during wartime that's what happened during the serbian war and in the in the war in nato 1999 there was a lot of human trafficking going on and even the u.s government uh, corporations were caught uh doing human trafficking dine corp d-y-n-c-o-r-p if you research it you'll see that they were caught doing uh, uh sex trafficking or human trafficking so the thing is though this thing is huge and it's and it really upsets should upset everybody and and we need to do something about it and the thing is there is things we can do and I want to list a few things that we can do actually to actually prevent human trafficking and to actually be aware of it, to not only be watchers uh, of, of the movie, if you've seen it, <clears throat> but um, to actually, you know, and to not only just say, oh, how horrible it is and uh, have good thoughts about it, but actually do something about it and not even just stop human trafficking, but share the gospel of Jesus Christ, because the heart of the problem with people is that they have a problem with their heart. And so if the heart is not transformed by Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter whether you you can try to eradicate as much as you can. And is, and is great. We should eradicate as much as we can. Pornography, pedophilia, human trafficking, sex trafficking, the whole agenda of uh, transgenderism and um, the all the, the, the 
push of the gay agenda too to destroy a male and female marriage so we should try to get eradicate in order to bring back uh, morality and the right kind of living but that's never going to solve the heart though because you can legislate morality as the government you know romans 13 says we should they should legislate morality and the god gave us the ten commandments to have a conscience so we legislate ourselves but unless the heart is changed the people will not change themselves they'll just do whatever the higher power the government says but they don't actually have a change of heart and that's why um, it's important to do whatever is necessary to stop human trafficking, but it's also important to pray for the for the people who are involved in it and the victims and also pray for their salvation, that they become saved and they don't end up in hell when they die. Because what's worse than even human trafficking is not the abuse of the body here on this earth. It's the, it's the destruction of the soul in hell because every one of us, uh, abuser, abuser, have sinned against God. And that doesn't justify human trafficking. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that for any of those liberals who will misquote me. But what I'm saying um, is that we are all sinners. Um, the abused and the abuser, everyone is a sinner. And everyone needs forgiveness uh, by Jesus Christ. Because without God's forgiveness and without his um, giving us a new spirit... Uh, in our in our in our body and a new and a renewed soul we cannot enter heaven in eternity so we might save the body here on earth uh, but if we lose the soul then uh, what what have we really done and so it's important to share the gospel while saving children from human trafficking but I want to give uh, five or six reason uh, five or six steps you can do to stop human trafficking in your life um, or in your arena or sphere of influence number one stop watching porn Porn is the num is is literally what is actually um, giving the human traffickers the money and the ability to continue doing what they're doing because every people are so addicted to porn in America that it's destroying uh, our society. You know that's something that a lot of us struggle with, especially men, and and because we struggle we. We, we give in to that it, it allows the 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 videos to be reused and used again over again and so the woman that could be involved in sex trafficking she might not be involved but her video can be seen millions of times and that is you know destructive to the soul but besides that point you know in, in, in nine countries the 49 percent of porn is made by people who um, are uh, sex trafficked or who are in abusive situations. So you have half of porn, which is produced by human tra uh, human trafficking operations or, or sex trafficking operations. And because of that, you know, this, this great sin is becoming so widespread. And so the way that we stop it is stop watching porn. And if you, if you need deliverance, you know, cry out to Jesus Christ, you know, he can deliver you from porn. But it's so important that we stop. We realize that when, when you're logging into that website, you're logging in um, to the popular porn website, you're actually accessing a demonic network uh, where the human traffickers, the sexual abuse people, the girls, they're all to, there together. And But the demonic spirits are behind it and they're pushing you to, to be involved with demonic spirits as you're looking at pornography. And so uh, there's a there's a spiritual component that is huge and, and, it, and it, it saps your strength. It saps your vision for life. It destroys marriage. It destroys relationships. And finally, it allows for sex trafficking to keep happening. So porn has to be stopped for this to uh, stop as well. Number two, we have to value human life from the womb to the tomb. The thing is, is though human life is not really valued as much as we think in Western society. Most people are are shocked when they hear about the statistics of human trafficking and slavery or modern day slavery. But are we as shocked about abortion as we are about sex trafficking? I'm not trying to compare the two specifically uh, per se. I'm just saying that we have to start valuing human life from the womb, you know, not just valuing it when it's uh, 10 years old. Uh, we have to see that life is so precious to God that it has to be protected from the from conception to birth to the end of life you know you have you have euthanasia now where there's countries that basically say oh yeah you know if you want to kill yourself kill yourself what kind of disgustingly demonic um thought enters into people that you know you, you know you, you they should just kill themselves you know canada has that and then a few other countries i believe 
Sweden or Finland, I don't remember which one, but the thing is, is though you have devaluing human life at the tomb, almost at the tomb when people are old, and you have devaluing of human life at the womb, which is uh, why abor millions of abortions happen. So sex trafficking is, is, a, is a continuum, it's a continuum of the result of devaluing of human life. If we devalue human life now, um, when we're little, then how much more are we going to be not really understanding what sex trafficking is really doing um, to people, what pornography is doing to people. So if we value human life, you can actually stop watching pornography <laughs> because you'll value the woman and you'll see them as your own daughters, somebody's daughters. Uh, you'll see them as uh, half of them probably being abused. And then you'll stop, um, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll prevent human trafficking from your end, um, not just from the end of the authorities, DHS or Tim Ballard, Operation Underground Railroad, doing something about it, but you can prevent it from actually funding it with your own eyes and if you pay money for, for that stuff as well. But so that's number two. Number three, we have to pray for uh, victims of human trafficking and the perpetrators. You know, prayer is powerful. God does answer prayer. He hears prayer. God is not, um, God is, God's ears are not closed. And if we actually listen to God, we can actually, uh, or actually if we know the heart of God, we can actually pray for people who are in human trafficking and sex trafficking and pray that God sends the right people, the right angels, you know, on earth to, to save these people because um, if we don't pray for them, you know, we're just having good feelings and good thoughts after watching the movie and, you know, we're not really doing anything about it. So prayer is powerful. Um, God wants us, I believe God really wants us to pray for uh, the, the, the victims of human trafficking. It's a challenge to me as well. I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted and countries um, who, where the gospel is not allowed. I pray for them and, I, you know, especially supporting Voice of the Martyrs, which talks about how many Christians are also being abused by their by the perpetrators who are, um, you know, either Muslim or of different religions that hate the pe person in their lives that became a, becomes a Christian. So I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ, too. And you should pray as well for those Christians who are being persecuted and being abused, sexually abused and trafficked by their captors, because it's important that we um, we really show love to one another. And if we can't do anything about it because we're in another country, like I'm in America, we can pray and God does hear those prayers. Uh, and uh, God, God does change things when we pray. God's waiting for us to cry out. Okay, well, number, number, number four, uh, get involved. You know, there's a lot of ministries, there's organizations um, that do campaigns. Um, they do, um, you know, raise money through, through marathons, run, uh, runs and stuff. So th they help women that are in sex trafficking. My friend is involved in um, supporting a, uh, a bridal uh, shop that actually sells bridal uh, clothes for uh, weddings. And, and they give a lot of the proceeds, uh, most of the proceeds or, or all of it to, to the anti-human trafficking organization. So um, it's important to support organizations that do these things. So I would encourage you to really get involved because if you can't do it physically, you can get involved financially to get involved with organizations that support um, anti-human trafficking. And I would encourage you to get involved in Christian organizations that actually care about the soul as well as the body. They don't just, you know, save the body and uh, give it, leave it to the government, but they save the body and they preach the, God, good, the good news of Jesus Christ to those victims and even the perpetrators if they're caught. Um, so I would encourage you to find Christian organizations to support. There are, um, you can Google them and find them, but make sure they're legitimate and not fake because there could be a lot of fake, uh, legit, uh, fake organizations and they could steal your money. So make sure they're real. Another one is uh, watch for signs in real life. Number five is watch for signs for people who are in bondage, you know, because even around us, there could be people in bondage that we don't know about. When I went to Phoenix um, for the ministry for the Super Bowl that I did, uh, evangelize in Phoenix, I already knew that the Super Bowl is one of the biggest uh, sex trafficking operations in America on that day. So, and it happens in whatever city the Super Bowl is in. There's a bunch of pimps and sex trafficking uh, people, uh, men that actually capture women or they sex traffic them uh, during the Super Bowl because it's very easy to do that with hundreds of thousands of people being there. So I knew that going in there that there would be sex trafficking involved. I didn't see any personally because we went
went around and we shared Jesus Christ with people, passed out tracts, preached the gospel to everybody. Um, so we only got people who were either Christians or people who were really touched by uh, what we shared and they wanted to hear the gospel and, and invite Christ in their lives or they hated us for being there. But the, 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 the thing is, is that there are signs that you can know, you know, as someone who is in control of somebody else, you know, you see somebody uh, not with their family members who could be walking with somebody who controls them, controls their ID, controls their passport. Um, I'm not talking about family members. I'm just, or underage people who have uh, legitimate guardians. I'm talking about people you see who you'd be like, you know, I'm not sure like this person looks like she's been beat up. You know, something's going on. There's um, a victim mentality going on here. And the person with them, it seems like he's controlling them, manipulating them. So there could be signs that you could see. And um, it's important to really be aware of that because you can actually call the police and, and stop something happening in progress. You know, you can stop something in your neighborhood where you see people being abused. You know, there's something in America where everyone just takes their phones and records bad situations from uh, happening, whether it's rape or whether it's it's murder, violence, but they don't actually do stuff about it. You know, it's it's rare to hear people on the news do something about it. So it's important that you step up and do something about it, that we step up and do something about it. And finally, number six, you know, um, uh, evan evangelize, do more. Uh, this is for those who really um, are Christians and who really want to serve the Lord. Evangelize at events uh, that are that have huge human trafficking um, operations going on because you never know who you can actually reach with the gospel. If you reach somebody with a gospel that is uh, involved in uh, pimping out a girl or, you know, in, in trafficking a woman, they might be so convicted and they might turn themselves into the police or stop what they're doing. I mean, you never know what might happen. So I would encourage anybody who is, is wanting to go street evangelizing or go to huge events like the Super Bowl, uh, which me and my ministry team went to, I would encourage you to go there because you just don't know how, what kind of opportunities you might have and, and the opportunities to really uh, save a life or to save uh, a perpetrator from being destroyed for what he's doing. Uh, so yeah, you never know. And uh, so it's, it's basically a call to action. You know, the Sound of Freedom movie is important. It's finally exposing the underbelly of what's really been happening in America. And um, just for a final comment, I want to say that in America, human trafficking and sex trafficking is real. Just because we're a first world country does not mean it's not happening in our neighborhoods, in our cities. I live by the border and we have a lot of human trafficking operations happening because of the poorest border. And the guy in the movie, not Jim Caviezel, but Tim Ballard, he's the guy who said that the border needs to be secure because there's so much trafficking happening because the border is not secure. And he's had experience of um, girls and kids being trafficked through the border from Colombia and South American countries into America. And they were abused, sexual abuse on the way to America because the border was open. So it's so important to contact legislature and contact your senators to make sure that they shut the border down. Doesn't matter which administration it is, Biden or Trump or whoever. And so it's important to really make sure that we are on the front lines of, of this war against modern day slavery. And we are fulfilling God's heart of saving these little kids because Jesus even said it's better to have a millstone uh, tied around your neck and you be thrown in the, into the sea than to offend these little children of mine. And even though um, all of us need Jesus Christ, all of us, uh, Muslim, Buddhist, atheist, agnostic, and Christian, all need Jesus Christ to save them. The thing is, is that we can save, pe save people um, spiritually by sharing the gospel while we uh, save them physically by uh, really being active in the front lines against human trafficking. So I hope you guys were blessed by this um, recap of the Sound of Freedom movie and what you can do to actually stop uh, human trafficking because I feel, I feel like God put it in my heart to help people understand that there is something you can do personally and it stops with making a decision yourself that you are not going to be um, a victim of the devil and you're not going to be his plaything and going to and not being not going to be used uh, to contribute to child sex trafficking and modern day slavery through pornography addiction and consumption and also to um, to actually pray for everybody that's in this you know this tragedy whether it's the victim or the perpetrator that they come the perpetrators come to complete justice whether they get executed or they all they repent if there's a chance for them to repent and come to Christ so that their sins could be for, blotted out 
by the loving uh, God who uh, who wants us to all be you know forgiven. But if people do not want to be forgiven, then there's no other hope. Uh, you know, I encourage you guys to share this video, and um, I hope you're blessed by it, and uh, continue the good fight, standing up against the devil in whatever sphere you are in this world and uh, continue the good fight and standing up against human trafficking and modern-day sex slavery. See you guys later. God bless you.